Hello! <laughs> Long time no see. Hello, Ayana. How are you? Can you hear me? This is a ask me anything kind of live, okay? Can be in Portuguese too, if you feel more comfortable. Hello. Amor 0807 Art Class Class Planejados How are you? Hello Amor, how are you Eliana? So how was your day? How was your Monday? My Monday was so crazy So busy What did you do today? And if you want to practice, if you want to talk to me, just send me an invitation. Uh, an invitation, right? Uh, not an invitation. Uh, you're fine. A request. Send me a request and we'll talk. Amor, how long have you been learning English? Are you a beginner, an intermediate student, an advanced student? Eliana, what about you, Eliana? Do you want to talk? Do you want to practice? I know this... Oh, you're from Angola! Also, you speak Portuguese, right? Hello, é Silva. Is Portuguese your native language? And uh, where are you now? Are you in Angola now or are you in Brazil? You're from Brazil. Eliana, where in Brazil are you from? É Silva, hello. Remember, if you want to talk, we can, okay? So, sim, sim what? <laughs> you speak Portuguese, sim. Yes, you speak Portuguese. Amor, why? Luanda, Luanda, right? Ar Arte Class Planejados is from Brazil too. Where in Brazil? Are you from Minas Gerais? São Paulo? Okay, cool. And how is the weather in São Paulo today? Hello, André. Hello, what's up? I'm good. How are you? Marcos. Hi, Marcos. Vladimir. Show you, Amakino, Anderson, Rodney, hello. Uh, okay, so if my, it is still in Polish, so I don't know. Do you want, Rodney, do you want to talk, Rodney? Let's try. If you accept my invitation, it's very cloudy. Very good, good to hear. Hello, Ajne, <laughs> I think. Does anybody else want to talk? Uh, and you, Andre, Andrea, uh, how long have you been learning English? Hello, Anderson, Marcos, hello, Rodney. Do you still want to talk, Rodney? Rodney. <laughs> gringo, hello, gringo, where are you from, gringo? Oops. Lucia Almeida, Ivani Lopes, Lucia Almeida, how are you? So, oh, there is something new here. There is a question thing. Pitanias Tfoye Relatsi. Ubrun, I like Pitania, what's this? Hmm. There is a new feature here. It's a question thing. I don't know how to use it. 
So I believe you're Hafa? Hafa, Nava. Do you have any questions? Would you like me to say something, explain something? Do you have any, you know, uh, do you confuse anything in English? Would you like some light on that? I can do that now. Have you been, hello everyone, Rafa, right? Rafa Navarro. So have you been having classes with a teacher or have you been learning by yourselves? Fabio, hello. How are you? Where are you from, Fabio? Where is Rafa from? Lu, Lucelia, where are you from? The first time here. Never watch your videos. <laughs> well, make a, an effort to watch the videos. <laughs> it's good. You mean the videos we post to Instagram, to our feed? Watch the videos. Conversação. Honey, let's talk. We have a, you have a chance now to talk. How can I improve my English? That's a good question. <laughs> Me too, what? You have problems speaking. Learning by yourself, good. Yeah, so... How do you practice conversation? How do you practice speaking? Let me put this a little bit like that. My tip is, if you want to practice speaking, you should speak, right? What I do, Ribeirão Preto, Rafa, I am from Belo Horizonte, in Minas Gerais, and I feel great. It was a very busy day. I woke up very early. And haven't stopped working until now. Um, I feel great. What do you do? What do you work with? So back to conversations, back to speaking in English. How do you practice that? I study languages too. And uh, this year I started learning Polish. I don't know if you are all new followers or not. I don't know how long you have been following us here. But I every now and then mention that I have been practicing learning Polish since April this year, so it's been eight months. And Polish is a very difficult language. And uh, the other language I learned before Polish was German, it was four years ago. And I, I was thinking about that. Somebody asked me yesterday, uh, it, it's a Swedish woman, and she moved to Poland and she de she's desperate because she can't speak, she can't say a word, she's living in Poland. The languages are very different. Swedish and Polish are very, very different, very hard. I think she had a few classes before she moved to Poland, but she, she's having a very hard time there because you know that it, it's not just, you do, it's not that you just move to the country and you will magically start speaking that language. This will not happen if you don't make a, an effort, if you don't organize yourself, if you don't plan, if you, you know, do the work. So she was asking me about that. How do I start speaking Polish? How do I do that? So again, uh, four years ago, I decided to lo start learning German by myself using the internet. It was before I had this genius idea of using Instagram to learn languages. But I used many, many online resources, many. And, but one thing that I did, my strategy was, I, I like grammar a lot. And I had heard that grammar, uh, German grammar could be tricky, could be difficult, especially because it has cases. So I decided to attack that aspect of the language. I got a grammar book and I did all the exercises of the grammar book. I didn't speak, uh, I didn't practice speaking. I didn't practice pronunciation. I didn't practice anything, only grammar. <laughs> I finished the book and uh, I think I spent like two notebooks because I wrote all the exercises on my notebooks. So I got like two notebooks filled with exercises. And after I finished the first grammar, I started a second grammar. But I kind of ran out of fuel and I stopped like midway, midpoint. And uh, 
But of course, that parallel to that, I was watching movies in German. I was listening to songs in German all the time. I love uh, Hamstein, so I was listening to that all the time. Uh, there is a very good soap opera, a German soap opera that I like. I watch it uh, an episode every day. So I was practicing listening, writing, grammar, um, but I was not practicing speaking. And I did that for about one year and a half, almost two years. And then I stopped. And then I kind of got I burned out, I think. I got tired and I stopped. And then I started studying, you know, um, dabbling with other languages. There was a hiatus of four years. And this year, I decided to try, try it again. But I noticed that my strategy with German was not very good. It was good, but it could be better because I didn't practice speaking. So I wanted to do it differently with Polish. And what I did is I started speaking Polish from day one. Day one. Polish is considered one of the 10 most difficult languages in the world. And uh, I decided to start speaking it right away. How? I didn't know the words. I didn't know the pronunciation. I didn't know the grammar. I didn't know anything. How could I say things like that? What I did was I got, very, I got a book with very, very short sentences, super simple sentences. And I wrote them in Google. I listened to the pronunciation. I repeated, listened, repeated, listened, repeated, listened, repeated. And then I recorded myself. And then each video was very, very short, like five to 10 seconds long. And I, because I would record five, five sentences during this time. In the beginning, it was very awkward. It was very strange because everything was new. The pronunciation, the grammar, the words, there is no similarity with Portuguese whatsoever. But I insisted. I re recorded uh, on day one and then I continued. Day two, day three, day four, day five. And I have done this every day, every single day, until today. What happened is that I got more and more involved with the language because, and because I was studying every day, I started to fall in love with the language. I started to fall in love with the music. I found super cool Polish singers. And it's so weird because I can't find, you know, singers that are as cool as the, as the Polish singers among, you know, Italian singers, French singers, German singers. That's so weird. But I'm very happy that now I know a little Polish because I can understand what they're singing and I love them. Big, big fan. So I started watching uh, Polish TV shows. And actually nowadays, if you have Netflix, there is one uh, I haven't started uh, watching the series. It's called 1983. It's a Polish TV show. And people say it's great. I'm, I'm very curious about it, looking forward to starting this one. I am in the middle of a very long TV show now, which is Merli, uh, Merli, Merli, I think. It's a Catalan TV show, uh, and it's awesome. I recommend that. Uh, the, uh, it's obviously, obviously in Catalan, but uh, there are subtitles in English, and I really, really recommend that show. It's really great. So I need to finish that show first and then start watching this Polish TV show. What happened is that in, on day one, on the very first day, I recorded five seconds. But because I insisted and because I became more and more involved with the Polish language every day, I started to become more comfortable and I started to increase my recording time. So I started increasing. And now, so there was something else. I participated in many languages on Instagram because I was recording these videos here on Instagram. 
of course, not in, on this account because this is Negocio Inglés, but I have another account for languages. If you want to, to take a look, it's Polyglot Erica. And uh, I have been registering mostly my Polish journey there. Um, and uh, these challenges are great because, Eliana, you want to talk? These challenges are great because you have a purpose, you have an objective, you have like tasks you need to, you need to fulfill, but it's not for some, somebody else. It's for yourself, it's for you. You know, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. It's, it's something that makes you feel good, makes you feel you have accomplished something. And I have become addicted to this kind of feeling and I have taken part in many challenges and the challenges and my commitment to the challenges made me increase my knowledge, my time of recording. So these days, today, for example, the video I recorded in Polish was around one minute, 10 seconds, something like that, which is a lot because uh, this video. So in the beginning, I was memorizing individual sen short sentences. And uh, then I changed my, my strategies a little bit. So I started to, because it was very annoying going back and forth, Google recording, Google recording. Blah, blah, blah. And then I decided to memorize the sentences. I started to memorize like five sentences, five short sentences. And the feeling is very good because it, you know, you feel like <laughs> you're kind of getting to it, getting familiarized, getting to the language. And it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. So I started to do that. I did it for a while. This, in these challenges, you have to answer questions, simple questions. Uh, what language are you learning now? Why? Where do you live? Describe a place where you live. Or tell us a little about your job. Tell us a little about your hobbies and things like that. So, hello, Jose. Uh, and... Uh, the tasks are very simple and the content actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just an excuse for you to feel comfortable speaking. At least in my case, that's how I see it. So I did that every single day and I actually increased the number of videos I recorded. In the beginning, it was just one video per day and now it's three videos. It's three videos. I record one video. If you want to see my videos, they, I have a YouTube channel, Polyglot Erica, and uh, I post my videos, my videos there. On my Instagram account, it's just one of them. It's one challenge. Um, re, uh, daily Language Diary. It's called Language Diary Challenge. That's the one I post on my Instagram account. And I decided to... Uh, set myself a challenge. It's a grammar challenge. This one I post to YouTube. And the other challenge is hosted by Jonathan Huggins. It's the 30 day speaking challenge. It's a 30 day speaking challenge, like a month. I have been doing it. I've done it for five. I've done it five times. 150 days. And now I'm in my sixth time doing this challenge. And uh, I have met lots of, I, I've met Polish people that have become friends and it's fantastic. It's so great because they want to talk to me all the time. They send messages, they want to speak, etc. And uh, I just feel like you, maybe. I feel like, uh, I'm, like I'm not ready to speak or I don't know what to say. So after eight months, uh, there was this friend, and he's doing the same challenge too. And on Saturday morning, I was just checking WhatsApp or Instagram. It was Instagram. And then I decided to, to ask him if you would like to talk. Let's talk, because I actually talked just one time after two months learning Polish with another friend, <clears throat> and it was on WhatsApp. And uh, I called him on WhatsApp, and we talked a little, 
I didn't understand much and I couldn't say much. I think I said like two or three words and then I couldn't remember more because at two months, your vocabulary sucks. It's very, very little, right? It's nothing. And you don't have time. You haven't had time to remember words. So, uh, but it was a great, great opportunity. I love it. But that wasn't my first time speaking Polish. And after that, freely, right? Without recording myself. And the second time was last Saturday. It was great. And the, my conversation in Polish is on my face. On my YouTube channel, Polyglot Erica, a conversation with Cuba. And it was awesome. After eight months, I want to know how long you have been learning English. I want you to write here for me. Carlos is here. <laughs> Carlos, Rafa, everybody. So I want to know how long have you learning? How, how long have you been learning English here? Because in my case, after eight months, I dared to talk to someone. So we use the Skype. I recommend that. And we can actually do that if you want, if you'd like. We can uh, schedule something and record a conversation using Skype. Okay, if you want to do that, let me know. But he said yes, he had time to do that. So I said, let's go, let's do it now. And then uh, I called him and uh, it's nice. In his case, it's good because he is a language learner uh, and he's studying languages. So he has preparation. It's not just any person, okay? So he has preparation. So. He was like a teacher, because I think he's a teacher. I'm not sure, but I think he's a teacher. He spoke very slowly. He didn't speak English once for the first half hour. He explained to me what we would do. He would say, speak very slowly, say things very slowly. And then uh, after 30 minutes, but I have to say that I used Google Translate to help me. Because to, to um, what's the name to to help right to give me some structure, but I was able to remember much much more than the first time I talked. This is a fact. This is obvious. I could remember more. I could understand everything he said. Everything. When I didn't understand, I knew how to ask him to repeat or to speak slowly, and uh, I felt comfortable. I didn't feel anxious and frustrated and things like that. I, ve I felt very comfortable. So this is important too. If you're going to talk to someone, I would recommend someone who will, will speak slower to you, who can help you, a person who is patient and um, you know, yeah, especially that patient and uh, a person who, does, who is not very anxious because that can uh, help you feel comfortable. And when you relax, you start to remember more. This is what happens. We need to relax because what happens is that when you are, when you have to talk to someone, but there is some kind of pressure, it can be... Um, an external pressure or the most common kind of pressure comes from here. It's a voice that tells you that you can't do it, that what's the point? You're going to forget it all anyway. And what's the point of it all? So this is very serious. If you don't know how to deal with this voice in your head, this can become a problem because you will never uh, be able to speak you, if you listen to that voice a lot. I'm clicking here. I don't know if you want to talk. <laughs> I think sometimes you, you click, uh, you touch there, but it's by, by chance. Hello. What's your name? <laughs> yeah, it's always by chance. Everywhere, and suddenly they're here. 
It's very difficult. Yes, Andrea. Yeah, so anxiety can be a problem, but we know that we feel that way. It's not just you. I feel that way. Everybody feels that way. If you have a brain, you will feel anxious. The point is not to wish you wouldn't, you know, to make it go away. The point is to work with your anxiety. What can you do to, to control your anxiety somehow? So this is what I try to do. Breathing is a very good thing. Uh, breathing, you know, deep breaths is important. Um, also, expectation. Expectations can be something very um, frustrating, definitely. Because we tend to have expectations that do not correspond to reality. We tend to do that. We tend, especially because we tend also to compare ourselves to everybody else, right? Especially here on Instagram, it's very easy because you're following like a million people. So you're always comparing yourself to other people. If you're following people who are learning languages, you will compare yourself to them. Again, this is unavoidable. I believe this is unavoidable, but we can uh, find ways to make it work, even with all the anxiety, even with all the comparison, I still want to make this work. I still want to be able to talk. What can I do <laughs> to talk? So I think that's what I have been doing, trying to do. Another thing, uh, so Kuba, the person I talked to on Saturday in Polish, he, uh, we were talking after, I just posted our conversation, which lasted around 30 minutes. But after that, I gave up, I kind of got very tired. My neurons were all gone. But, well, not all gone because I kept talking in English after that. We, we talked a little bit about that because he is a little puzzled by the fact that I have been recording myself from the beginning because for him, it doesn't work. He has other strategies. And this is so interesting because I am always recommending this, telling people to record themselves and so on. But maybe this doesn't, does not work for everybody, right? For me, it's perfect. I'm, you know, I'm learning Polish very, very fast, but be, probably because of the recordings. But for him, uh, recordings don't work so well at least with uh, languages where, uh, where he's a beginner. For example, he was doing the challenges in Japanese and he's a beginner in Japanese and he, he said it didn't work for him. Uh, for me, it worked. So Andrea, I've been studying for three months and a half. I'll keep trying. You're... <laughs> yeah, Andrea, keep studying. Uh, three months is nothing. Now, yeah, three months is nothing, okay? If, if you are going to learn a language, you have to know that it's a lifetime commitment. It's a life commitment. Yeah, if you want to learn faster, my suggestion for all of you is to expose yourselves more to the language, right? Where do you live, Andrea? Did you say that here? Do you live in Brazil? Because if you live in Brazil, it's not as easy, for example, as if you live in Europe and or in countries with, you know, if you live in Rio de Janeiro, places with lots of tourists and uh, places like that. But um, if you're like me, I live in Belo Horizonte, I have to rely on the, on the internet and I have to rely on social media because I'm going to be honest here, I don't like those sites where you meet people um to practice the language when i was learning german i did that i used all the sites available at the time to to find people to practice native people to find native people to practice german and i was very 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 disappointed and um yeah obviously for obvious reasons right because you don't know the person and you spend so much time trying to find someone and uh, it was not a complete uh, waste of time. 
but it was not efficient. Uh, that's the word. It was not efficient. Uh, the way I have been doing now, I am totally in love with it because I have the second Instagram account for my languages. I am following language teachers, language learners, uh, everybody that has a relation with languages and have focused accounts. This is important too, because if the account is not, if it's a mix of the person's life, I don't know if other things uh, apart from languages, I kind of don't care. I stop following the person. But if the account is focused on languages, yes. And then after, it's like a, being part of a community. This is so important too. So I feel supported by the community. This is actually a bonus. I could do this alone, but of course that having people around you doing the same things, going through the same things. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of support, a lot of support. And uh, yes, the, the, the amount I have accomplished today with Polish is a lot due to the fact that I have this incredible, amazing, community that I'm part of and you get to know the people you, you get to trust them this is important if you're going to talk to someone you need to trust them it, you know I know that Brazilians like to talk to anyone you know <laughs> it's very easy for me it's not that easy I need I need to know the person for a long time I need to um, you know to start talking to that person I need time so for me, I have this difficulty. If you don't have this barrier, go ahead and talk to people. Use the internet. But I, I would recommend uh, creating a focused account. That's how I call it on Instagram. What is a focused account? You create an account just for languages. You're going to post just language related stuff there and follow people that are related to languages somehow. On Instagram, you can do that on Instagram and on Facebook. On Facebook, I follow, I only follow groups. Uh, I'm part of a lot of groups. And uh, when I see my feed, it's just language related stuff. Only that, there is nothing else. There is no politics. There is no, you know, nothing, nothing. There are no cats. <laughs> it's, it's very sad, I know. A Facebook feed without cats is a very sad feed, but it's, uh, um, yeah, I have to do that. And uh, it's just that. So because I am focusing on Polish now, but I'm also reviewing other languages, German, um, Italian, Spanish, and French. And uh, so that's all I see on my feed, Spanish, French, Italian, Polish, English, right? But English has become for me, English is what you should do. Uh, it's what I do here. Everything is in English, right? So my cell phone, my, my smartphone is in English. My computer is in English. That's the language you should be more in contact with, exposed to on a daily basis. Try to do that. And try to say the words out loud. If you want to speak the language, you need to say it out loud. It cannot be just in your mind because it's completely different when you read a text here and when you say the words. It's completely different. Hello, Marla, Marla Fraga. You've been trying to do what? <laughs> Not sure anymore. Golden? Labor, hello Labor, are you still here? Would you like to talk? We can talk. If any of you would like to talk, what do you think about the wizard school, can you say? Yes, I can say that wizard. I actually taught at wizard a long time ago, over 15 years ago, I taught there. And uh, what I think is that teachers are important. It doesn't matter the method, but teachers, some people say they are just a supplement. Of course, when they say that, they mean that you need to, a supplement or a complement, you need to add. You cannot just rely on a teacher if you're learning a language, okay? Don't do that, especially today. 
I mean, it's not, uh, I, I mean, it's not to trust. You're going to trust your teacher, but do whatever the teacher tells you to do and, and follow everything. Uh, do all the exercises and things like that, but extrapolate that and use the internet to expand, right? So uh, that's what we tell our students to do. So they have classes with us, but in our classes, they, they are the ones who tell us things. So they speak the whole class. If they uh, learned some grammar, uh, it's usually something they, are, they have problems with. They watch everybody's, uh, all the, the English teachers' videos on YouTube. And during the class, they explain. They explain that point. And then we kind of, we talk about it and I give some pointers and things like that. If they listen to a podcast, they are going to tell in detail uh, the whole thing here in class. If they read an article, it's the same thing. So they're always speaking here. So teachers are very, very important. I wouldn't recommend learning a language without a teacher. I'm a teacher, I've been learning forever. Uh, from, I'm not that young <laughs> anymore. So I've been practicing learning languages for a very long time. I am very, I spend my whole days, like 24 hours in this. This is my job. So this is my focus. And I also like to experiment uh, because this is important for the students. So um, I have preparation to do that by myself, to learn by myself. But if you are a person who has a job, who has a family, who has kids, who has a crazy life, I don't think uh, learning by yourself will take you very far, very fast. You, you can learn stuff, but it will take you a long time because you need focus. If you have a crazy life, the teacher will give you that focus and uh, you'll be able to use your time in a more efficient way. Again, we are back to that word, efficiency, right? Of course, we're going to learn languages forever. It never ends. But uh, if you want to reach an intermediate level or even an advanced level, which is ideal, right? Because the very, very, very few people who can speak English today in Brazil, let's say, they are, I would say, in an intermediate level uh, in, because they feel comfortable there. They feel comfortable and then they kind of slack and uh, they don't feel challenged to learn more, to practice more. And uh, this means the progress will kind of slow down. So that's why I guess many people are people, some people call it a plateau, right? The intermediate plateau. It's a comfortable place to stay. We should stay there for a while, but most people stay there forever. And uh, well, if it's not going to hinder anything in your life, it's not a problem for you, that's fine, right? But if you want uh, more things, um, being able to be accurate, in the way you speak, being more precise and having a wider range of vocabulary. Um, you have to challenge yourself, you have to continue studying. And the teacher will help you uh, achieve or reach that point faster, I think. Unless you have some kind of preparation and you know how, and a lot of discipline, right? You have a lot of discipline. For I, for example, I, I am a very disciplined person, and I have become actually. I was I was not like that in the past. I became disciplined because I started adding many things, many different tasks in my day, and uh, I started to add them little by little. So I had time to organize them and to arrange them in a way that would be a nice, <laughs> nice routine for me. And uh, this has been working fine. And it's not a fixed routine. I have a, a rough like a basis and I work with that and I make the necessary changes, right? So uh, as time goes by. So back to your question. Yes, yeah, a teacher is important. Uh, a school is important. You're, you will always learn something in a school. Okay, so... Um, 
I am very thankful for all the schools I studied in. Um, I had classes in about two or three English schools when I was a teenager. I traveled abroad. I lived abroad. It was very, very. I am very thankful for that, for everything. So I watch TV only in English all the time. Yes. Be careful not to focus on only one skill, right? For example, only listening. Try to combine the skills. Try to combine listening with writing. Try to combine listening with speaking. Listening and reading, maybe if you're, the subtitles are in English. Uh, try to avoid passive, uh, not completely passive, but passive. Uh, only pr passive practice. Because pra uh, it's a practice, it's better than zero. I always say that. But it may not be so challenging. And we need to challenge ourselves. And this motto, this sentence, we need to challenge ourselves, I didn't hear from a language teacher. I heard this from, um, <laughs> from a, a, an instructor. Um, she's a hit instructor. Uh, it's a, um, it, she mixes heat and weightlifting and uh, things like that. Physical exercise, uh, physical trainer, let's say. And uh, she uh, is a very good instructor. And she says that all the time. You have to challenge yourself. If you want to grow, if you want to leave the comfort zone, you need to challenge yourself. If you don't do that, if you... Uh, stay longer than necessary in the comfort zone, you kind of start to decay. <laughs> your knowledge in your body it starts to decay. If you want to keep growing, you need to know how much time you should stay in the comfort zone and then move on. You know, and this comfort zone, it's, uh, you know, you can reach it uh, every now and then it's just part of the process you know you challenge yourself you get tired comfort zone you're rested you try again you challenge yourself and rest in the comfort zone and then you continue going up up and up and up in my case for example with polish i was uh, recording these very short videos very short sentences and then i was kind of feeling like I should challenge myself. So I started make, making longer sentences, longer sentences. And I think for one or two months, my videos were longer, like 30 seconds, not five seconds anymore, 30 seconds. And I was memorizing those sentences. So it's like 10 long sentences. Uh, what happened is that it was taking me a very long time. I learned a lot, a lot of new words. I practice pronunciation a lot, very happy with that. But uh, I think this month, November was the last time I did that. And then I felt like going back to shorter, fewer sentences. That's what I'm doing now. And now after doing all that hard work in October and November, the work now feels so good. <laughs> it's so comfortable because um, it's easier than before. But it's something, it's easier than before, but it's the basics that I need for a basic conversation with someone. You know, when they say, um, oh, I'm Brazilian, I'm an English teacher, you know, basic things like that. When you talk about things you like to do, your routine, um, and things like that. You know how to use the verbs, things are not new anymore. Cell phone, notebook, TV, movies, everything in English, great. Yes, that's it. Hi, Eudson. Are you still here? Eudson is amazing. He, we have these conversation sessions every week. Actually, any one of you, if you would like to, you can join us. It's free. And it's on Fridays at 8. Actually, 8.30 or 9. Because at 8, we have a, a grammar class. And after that, a conversation session. And Eudis has taken part in two of these conversation sessions. And it was the first time, right, Eudson? It was the first time he spoke 
uh, and he could speak with other the other people in the group twice. It was very nice. Uh, so listening is good, but this, but speaking is important. Another thing that I didn't say is you shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. Fool the students. <laughs> yeah, if you feel you can do better than that, I don't know, you can change the school or you can find, there are so many options today. You can find a, a private teacher. There are a lot of online courses nowadays. Yeah, you, you should look out for it, those courses. Uh, that's what I do, for example. I'm now getting back to my French also. That's one of the languages I like the most, French. And I started following a few French teachers. I started following one French teacher on Instagram. I have learned a lot with her, but... Um, yeah, you know, uh, you, you have to see there is always something you can learn, right? There's something, uh, there's always something you can learn. And uh, if you, and also, uh, even a course who would, I don't know, like you said, fool someone. If you, if you know, do these things, I, I don't know exactly what, what you mean by that. But if you have a teacher, you can do, you know, you can practice with the teacher, right? You can speak for the whole hour with the teacher. Or that's what I did, actually. When I was a teenager, I was in one of those schools, and there were obviously a few other students with me. But I was, I had a lot of energy for language learning, so I... I did everything the teacher told me to do, uh, all the homework, and that was before the internet. So in class, I memorized lines and dialogues in class, and I asked the teacher lots of time, lots of questions all the time. So even if you feel the course is like, you know, not what you expected, you can always profit from it. You can always learn there. You know, so make something good out of a bad situation. That's what I would say. You know, try to always see something good, the silver lining, right? The silver lining is the good side of something. Um, hello, Marco. I understand all that you said. Okay. <laughs> Yes, podcasts. I like podcasts. Some people don't like So, you see that people are different. People are different. In my case, recording myself every day helps. I will not stop recording myself, you know, so soon. I love podcasts. This is also something a lot of people don't like, but it works for me. So, the point is, you should experiment yourself. You know, you should try things out yourself and see what works for you. For example, with Kuba, the Polish guy I was talking to on Saturday, recording videos, uh, it doesn't work for him. Uh, he prefers writing. He prefers gra uh, grammar and writing. This works for him and it's fine. The thing is, you have to find out what works for you. What If you're doing something and you feel it's not working, stop doing that right? Stop doing that and try something else. Now, another thing that I didn't say here is um, you need to have an emotional connection. I don't know who wants to talk. I don't know. If you want to talk, let me know. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to practice. Yes, practice. I don't have the focus to learn by myself. Adri, if you don't have the focus to learn by yourself, you need someone else. It can be a teacher. It can be... The thing is, a teacher has a commitment. A friend will teach you whenever he wants to, whenever he feels like. This is what I feel without a teacher, without a Polish teacher. I have to count on the goodness <laughs> of strangers no not strangers because i always talk to people i i have already met and i know 
but uh, you know you can't force the other per person to talk to you whenever you want and this is why I record videos because I want to practice speaking every day and other people you know I cannot expect them to talk to me every day so if there is a chance to talk to them I'm super grateful but I will not stop practicing speaking because of, I don't I don't have anyone to talk to uh, what I was saying is about emotional connection I would like to ask you here we are almost uh, we are running out of time but can you write here if you have an emotional connection with English and by co emotional connection is something like an inner excitement excitement to learn and to use the language and to be able to understand people to be able to write and to you know do you have do you feel that or do you feel it's something that has has been imposed on you and you have no choice it's something that you don't like but you have to do you have to know english because of your job especially because of your job right i think that will be the case so Andrea has focus three hours a day difficult the same no it will always be difficult it will never be easy because if it's difficult it means you're learning you're learning remember when it becomes easy it means you are in the plateau if you are if you find it difficult all the time it means you're pushing yourself you're leaving the plateau right so maybe you should get back to the plateau and rest a little bit the plateau exists for a reason okay you sh we should not like avoid it uh, completely it, it exists so we can rest because if we don't rest we can burn out and then like we, what happened with me with german i think i got super tired and i i, I you know I, I didn't give up but i said i'm going to stop and i get back to it in the future that's what's happening now i'm back to german now but if you feel it's hard all the time try to make things a little easier go back a little bit go backwards like i'm doing now with polish i'm going backwards because it's different now uh, the simple things i'm uh, practicing now i'm experiencing them in a different way than from the beginning of the course uh subtitles in english yes definitely <laughs> thank you i'm i'm happy no i don't i live in uh, brazil in in belo belo horizonte for example i was telling cuba the my polish friend about where i live and then i said mieszkam mieszkam w belo horizonte <laughs> and then he said but eric how can you say belo horizonte in polish right how can you you uh you know because i was using the brazilian accent the portuguese brazilian portuguese accent and then i said oh, i don't know how to say belo horizonte how that would sound in polish and then i asked him to record for me for me and then he recorded it's very similar uh belo horizonte so it's not chi here in minas gerais i say chi all the time Belo Horizonte, it's a little different, right? It's Polish. This is a Polish accent. <laughs> uh, Ana, Ana Rocha Borges, uh, what group would, would you like to join? We have, oh, by the way, we have uh, two WhatsApp groups, big ones, and people there are very active. Uh, it's a very good group, both of them. We have uh, these lives. I had the idea of these lives now. I, th I think I'll do these lives every day because uh, I had this idea because of the advent. I don't even know if we have here. Uh, how do we call advent? How is it called in Portuguese? You know, the days before Christmas, right? So I didn't have the energy to do it on Saturday and on Sunday. I started today. But I'll keep doing these lives every day at the time that I can. I don't know about tomorrow. It won't be at six or at seven. Uh, I don't even know if I'll be able to do it tomorrow. I'll try. Uh, but if you want to join any group, just send us a DM, a direct message. Hello, 
Oh, from Turkey. Hello, Abdullah. So, Turkey. Uh, Turkish is an interesting language. It's a very difficult language. I have a, a friend on Instagram, Camilla. Uh, she is from, well, her family is from Turkey, uh, but her family moved to the Netherlands. She was born in the Netherlands, so she's a polyglot too. She speaks Turkish, right? And also uh, Dutch, English. She's learning Portuguese. She loves Portuguese and other languages, German, French. Uh, so uh, every now and then she says something in Turkish and uh, it's very beautiful. It's a very beautiful language. Online course, yes. So if an online course works for you, keep doing it. If it doesn't, try something else. Try it to add a, a variety, right? Uh, Leibe, yes, Leibe. The bad thing on school is that they just want to teach grammar, but grammar came after that. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. The order depends on the person. For example, when I studied German, I started with grammar. It was good because now that I'm refreshing my German, uh, I, I remember the grammar. I remember the grammar. But when I was studying German, I didn't practice speaking. So my pronunciation is very bad. It's very weak because I didn't practice. I never practiced speaking German or very, very little. So, um, for example, now that I have been uh, practicing Polish and mostly speaking, I haven't practice grammar a lot, I feel the need to practice grammar. And this is my plan for next year. This year was my foundation. I started in April. Uh, I will consider 12 months. So until uh, April next year, I, this will be my foundation. This first year is my foundation. In my second year, I will increase my grammar practice. I will definitely work with a textbook and I want to um, practice grammar a lot, a lot next year. And uh, so you have to see, you know, sometimes you have to focus more on one thing or another. You cannot do everything at once. It's very hard to find a balance. So be patient. Okay, the grammar you learn, I think it's so weird because people tend to complain a lot about the grammar they learned at high school. They say, oh, my classes are very bad, very bad. We're very bad because of your expectation. Your expectation was that you uh, having a class in high school would correspond to be living in the US and be able to speak English in a year. This is not feasible. This is not realistic, right? This is not realistic. What can a teacher do in a classroom in high school when you have like 50 students? You cannot expect people to learn uh, speaking. You have to teach the basics, which is grammar. I am very happy, happy and thankful for my teachers, my English teachers in high school, because I studied grammar a lot. I loved that and that was my basis, my, the foundation of the knowledge I have today. And I am only able to speak more or better or in a more precise way today because of that basis. You know, so there is something for every time in our lives. There is something. We have to be patient, persistent, you know, control our frustration. Uh, why? I don't understand. Why do people feel frustrated? We should be Thankful, thankful. I learned English before the internet. There was, this didn't exist. There was no Instagram, no Facebook, no YouTube. There were, you know, there were, uh, uh, wasn't an army of English teachers on YouTube. Books, you could download PDFs, you know, and the BBC, <laughs> you know, the BBC site you could access. Uh, didn't exist before. So let's be thankful. Oh, this is gonna end. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, the plan is to do this every day. I don't know, it won't be at the same time every day. On Friday, for sure, uh, 
on YouTube. The grammar class is on YouTube. And the speaking session is on Zoom. Just let us know. Send us a DM. Okay? So that's it. Thank you so much.